Oh. Okay, I just want to say hello again to everybody who's joined us and everybody who's watching um, the recorded version of this. This is a second part of uh, digital literacy um, social media training. And um, the first part- Oh, Alex, I wanted to ask you something. When you do these recordings, are they like saved somewhere so you can like re-listen to them if you want to re-listen to them again? Is yeah. it like on something somewhere? So like in case like, you know, if you don't get something, can you like listen to it again? Yeah, that's a great question, Estelle. Um, and I'm glad you asked that so everybody has a chance to listen to this because I get asked that a lot. Um, so um, I, I, I send out a weekly email. Do you get my weekly email, Estelle? It's like, yeah, you're, you're invited to this training. That's probably how yeah. you were able to attend today. And yeah. so um, when I send out a weekly email, it said you're invited to this weekly training. At the bottom of that email, there's a click here for the recorded version of the last last week's training. It's also oh. on, on yes. YouTube, which I can get you the link right now. Yes, it's also, oh, it's on YouTube too. It, okay, it's also on the ICS YouTube account. Um, if you okay. if you have the ICS. If you go to the ICS YouTube account, with which uh, Jesse might put in the chat for us, thanks, Jesse. Yeah, one sec. Um, of course. Yeah, so two ways of of getting the recorded trainings are at the bottom of the email. There's a click here link for last week's recorded training, um, and then the ICS YouTube account has um, all the recorded trainings. Um, so you go to the ICS YouTube like channel, and then you you click on one of those things. Is that what you're? That what yeah, you're they're all. Yeah, they're all titled and everything so like it'll be like social media training or google docs training and stuff like that um, oh, okay yeah we'll put it in the chat um here some, you go so um okay great. oh there it is yeah jesse's like this. thanks jesse um great great question yeah so um last week's training we covered um setting up social media uh accounts like um like YouTube, Instagram, a little bit of Facebook, which was similar. Um, Eric showed us how to uh, set up safe passwords um, and so, sort of how to go through the setup um, of, of that stuff. And he also gave us some links to navigating um, those sites as well. And Jesse um, also touched on setting up Facebook account, though, because it was very similar to YouTube and Instagram, we jumped into um, looking at your homepage and sort of the features available in Facebook. Um, so Jesse's going to continue um, this week. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll jump in to talk about uh, socializing safely in Facebook. We also addressed that last week. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll also give out some safety tips um, after Jesse's presentation. And then Eric might um, <clears throat> take the mic again to answer some questions. All right, uh, Jesse, the floor is yours whenever um, you're ready. Awesome. Well, thanks you guys for joining and I'm glad that I can come back and show you how to use Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. I'm on an iPad, so I'm hoping I can be able to um, share my screen. I think I will be able to. Um, can everyone see this? Yeah, I see it. Okay, cool. So it's basically the same thing on a desktop. Just the difference is this is an iPad. Um, oh, I don't have a desktop. I don't know if Mary does, but I don't have a desktop. So. Well, that's okay. Then I can just show you how it's on a tablet or a phone or it's yeah. basically the exact same. I guess the only really, to be honest with you, the only difference is um, you're tapping versus clicking. <laughs> do, do you, Estelle, do you have an iPhone or? No, I have a, uh, I have a, a Android and then I have a tab. I have a tablet. Okay, yeah, I have an Android too, and the Facebook icon is probably similar on an Android too. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. I think cool. I've seen it a couple of times. On that. Awesome. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, here is the my Facebook wall, which I have gone into um, before of um, the what the Facebook wall means. Um, 
I would just refresh what a wall means. It's like where you see um, the people that you follow um, post on here. Oh, speaking of, <laughs> like I follow, of course, ICS. So you can see here is this is um, ICS posted this post. And um, but I also wanted to talk about the features of Facebook as well today. Um, such as Facebook groups, which I run um, every single um, week. I um, post three times a week, as you can see here. And it's really neat. And so I encourage all clients to join and we just talk and ask questions and get to know each other, which is really fun. But there's also all all different kinds of groups also on Facebook of, and you can do things that, you know, that you're interested in or hobbies. And that's just, what's the beauty about, you know, being part of a Facebook group because you can connect with fellow people that um, share, like I said, the same interest or hobby or like for ICS is um, the Facebook group for all um, fellow clients. Um, to join and then over here if you see if you click see more again this is pretty much the exact same thing in a um, desktop the only difference is um, you will be clicking versus tapping if that makes any sense and again if at any time if you guys have any questions feel free to say it now or if you're watching this video, you can always reach out to me and I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Um, but if you click see more, there's all these other features on here. And um, I'm not gonna set it up because um, I am, um, where is it? Um, I'm trying to find, I swear there was another one in here that I don't see. Um, that's okay. I would just go to a different one um, for now. Is uh, What were you gonna say? I was gonna say, did you cover Marketplace last week? I forget, Jesse. I did, I did. Yeah. I just, oh. I can't seem to find the ones that I have on my notes here, but does yeah. any, how about this? As the people that are on um, this, the live recording, is there any ones that you want me to uh, cover right now? Because I don't see the ones that I have on my notes. Um, but it, out of all these like groups, friends, marketplace, watch, memories, saved, pages, events, blood donations, clim climate, um, Science Center, Community Help, COVID-19 Information Center, Device Requests, Emotional Health, Fantasy right. Games. Real, real quick, Jesse, you might be yeah. able to um, search for it in the search bar at the top, and that might be a good way to show people. That I can search. check, but let me see. I think that's only for like, um, I don't know if that's going to be, yeah, see, it's it's like won't let me because that's normally where you search for like friends and stuff. But yeah. but my my point is is that does anyone want me to cover any of these features right now that you can see here? So it might be good to go over just briefly what what events are and most recent might be beneficial. Say it again, you're really quiet, Eric, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, events and most recent. It's okay. Good to touch on both of those two. Okay, perfect. Uh, events, which is actually, I, I personally go to this tab quite often and you can see um, um, where events in your area that are things that are happening, such as like, this one, um, San Francisco Coffee Festival 2020. And you can see the date here. Let me 
right here that says Saturday, November 12th through the November 13th, which is, you know, not right around the corner, but they still <laughs> like to show that. <laughs> they still like to show what is happening this year or this month or this week and um it's just fun to see what's going on in the in the area and it could be things like a chocolate festival like or um or things like um disney um free events in san jose and sometimes music and yeah, it's kind of, it seems like a good way to, you know, go out there in the community and yes. you know, socialize with others and stuff like that. It's awesome. Cool. It's it's cool, too, because if you, I'm not like, for an example, if I, I'm just going to choose chocolate because that sounds really good right now. <laughs> if I click interested, then that will be posted to my wall, which I fe um, explained what a wall means um, on the last recording. Um, but if it will be posted on my wall showing that I'm interested in going. And so then my friends that I have on Facebook will see, oh, Jesse is going to the chocolate festival. Maybe I should go too. Um, so it's a good way to, um, you know, like you said, Alex, to, you know, go out in the community and see what's out there, which is really fun. Oh, Jesse, can you, um, go um you might have did this last week but um mm -hmm. because i think it's an important feature and maybe you could take a little bit more time on going uh, on the friends the uh yes. feature yes um here is where um i should say yes to her she's <laughs> um i can go to these are where my people have added me on facebook and I, I know you said to go over the friends part, but I feel like this part um, to discuss about um, French requests are really yeah, important. Yes. Yeah, this is important. Go for it. Um, because as you can see here, I know Julie Ann. Um, so I, I said yes to her French request, but some of these people, I'm, I don't really know who they are. So I'm not accepting um, the friend request because I don't know who they are. However, let's say, um, like, um, I'm trying to find, um, let's say, like here, if you see, it shows four mutual friends. Um, I, again, I don't know who this person is, but it, it, I could always ask the four mutual friends that I have on Facebook. Um, like, oh, who is this person? It shows that you're friends with them, like, to, to be sure. And another example, like, right below it, I'm not sure how to pronounce this person's name, but they don't have any mutual friends. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's important to be cautious about that. And I know, Alex, you, you were saying that you wanted to touch on something about this in particular, but I can go more about... Um, your friends um list in a second but did you want to touch something about this uh, yeah I, I think that's a good point um with checking for uh, mutual friends that's a great way of seeing if these people are real um you know actual people who may want to be your friends or friends of friends instead of some kind of um scammer or online fisher person who who just sort of creates a profile in order mm -hmm. to um, try to friend request you. And so let's say if Jesse maybe uh, befriended one of these people, she didn't you know, like Azif, Azif Khan, who she doesn't have any mutual friends with. Um, she befriends them, she confirms, and then he starts messaging her about, um, you know, meeting up or um, mm -hmm. giving her money, you know, that could easily go down into a scam or a phishing loop versus yeah. if she um, either deleted his request by pressing delete, which she could do, um, or she just ignored it like she's doing, or she could check in with some of her mutual friends if there was any mutual friends. So if you don't have any mutual friends, if you don't know the person, 
um, if you click on the, their profile and it doesn't look like a legitimate, uh, maybe they only have like four friends and mm -hmm. they don't have an address or whatever, um, uh, it, it's probably uh, safer not to add them as a friend. Um, it's likely that they could be a scammer or- I something. also wanted to point out, I personally choose not to de delete um, or confirm. Um, I agree with everything that you're saying, Alex, but I also choose not to click delete just in case, let's say they um, are wondering why I didn't confirm their friend request. I think it's better on if this makes anything makes any sense that I um, leave it be because if if they see that I delete it, then they're going to probably add me again versus if I don't um, click either one, then they're probably like, oh, she probably hasn't seen it yet. Hence, like 42 weeks ago or seven years ago, you know, like I just Sorry. rather be. Jesse, does it does it ever expire or does it always kind of leave it in that? It always limbo? stays there. So because it's always it, in limbo then. Yeah, yeah, so like you can see like 43 weeks ago, one year ago, four years ago, 15 weeks ago, like. Yeah. Um, but right. I also. And, and even if you deleted, they could keep accepting you. Um, I mean, trying to friend request you, uh, like Jesse said, it's a good point. You could just leave it in limbo as to not um, have them keep adding you. But if they do, if they were to keep, let's say you decided to delete just because, yeah. you know, you, you like to be organized and you, you like having all your friend request page, kind of like emails on zero or an answer. Then if they keep um, sort of requesting, you could always block them yeah, I was going to go into that because I know Estelle was asking um, about blocking last um, last week. Um, so I guess I can block this person to show you. If I scroll down here, you can see that. Um, does everyone see the three dots right here? Yeah. Yep. So you press that and it's going to sh show a couple things that you could do. Um, I personally am going to click block. And as you can see here, then it would explain what that means, which is that they won't be able to see your post no more. They won't be able to tag you, won't um, be able to invite you to events or groups, which I explained what events and groups are before, mm -hmm. message you and add you as a friend. So then you click block. And so now, as you can see, if I go back here, that person is not on my friend requests anymore. Does yeah. that make any sense? Yeah, that's yeah. a great example, yeah. Jesse. And I would add that once you block them too, um, like I was saying before, then they are no longer allowed to um, request. Uh, exactly, exactly. So um, yeah, that's a good example. Thanks, Jesse. Of course. Um, is there a, did there was was there something else I was going to cover? Um. Well, did you cover searching for friends or? Um. Well, here, like here. Let me go here. Mm -hmm. This is my friends list, and you can see. Um. I'm just showing that these are the friends I have on Facebook. Um. But then again, like I I showed with anywhere you go on Facebook on, on someone's profile, you can always click someone's like, um, like the three little dots. And that's how you can either see their friends, message them, or you can unfollow them, which is just that you can stay friends with them, but you just won't see their posts anymore. And you, or you can block the person or unfriend the person. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and and um, just as an example, can you search for a friend? Let's say like you just added, um, you see the search bar right there? Um, you just added Julianne Barry. So I just want people to know. Yeah. That they can... So then it, you just type in the person that you want to 
um, find, and right there is Julianne, mm -hmm. and here's her profile. Cool. So it's very um, user friendly, which is kind of the beauty about Facebook too, is that the more you're on it, the more it comes to understand, like the more you click around and stuff. Um, but like I mentioned before, if you guys have any questions, like please um, always reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to help in any way at any time. So I hope that explains anything, but if anyone else has any questions, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, yeah thank you. That was very helpful. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to be moving on to um, sort of just reinforcing some of the things I talked about last week about um, phishing scams, how to um, stay more secure. Um, online, when you are in these social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, how you could set up your uh, settings to be more private, you know, what to look for when somebody messages you or you message somebody. Um, so we're going to watch um, two videos that will help explain this um, a little bit better and then sort of just talk about um, some of those things and then lastly i'll i'll show some um tips we'll go over we'll just reinforce it by um some social safety tips for social media um that i have uh put together all right so i'm gonna share my screen and i'm gonna watch a video here okay And uh, let me know if you guys can hear this um, once it starts playing. Be careful what you post and where you. You guys hear that? Yep. yep. Right. Yeah. Cool. 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 Here we go. Click when using social media. Be careful what you post and where you click when using social media. Your identity might be at risk. Here are five things you can do to protect your online ID. Check and regularly update your privacy settings on your social media accounts. Use a different password for each of your accounts and set up a two-factor authentication. This will make it harder for hackers to access your account. Think carefully about what you post and your whereabouts. A vacation photo can tell a thief that your home is empty. Be wary of strangers who want to become fast friends or attempt to forge a romantic relationship on social media. Don't click on a post that directs you to another website to claim a prize, win a gift card, or take a quiz. For more tips on how to avoid scams, go to aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork and make sure to tune in to RFD TV the third Thursday of each month for Rural America Live with... Not ending, though. All right, cool. Um, that was a AAR. quick video from AARP. I thought it did a good job. So... Um, what can somebody um, name one or two of the um, of the social media tips that um, that was in this video? Hi, this? I'm Mary. I just wanted to say, yeah, so you wouldn't put your vacation in Hawaii while well, your home is empty. Yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't you do that, Mary? Well, if you have any any dates on it, boy, they can get the date, then they know you're not home and maybe want to look around for some toys. Right, exactly. So they know the they might know the date you're not home, especially if you post it online. Um, you know, some Alex, I'm actually gonna go, sorry to interrupt you. I'm actually gonna go to art right now, but I'm gonna watch this later. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us. Estelle. Thank you, Estelle. Oh, yeah, thank you. Bye. Um, 
Right. So um, I know a lot of people who will post photos after they've gone on a trip. They'll take all these photos, they'll have a good time, and then maybe they'll post um, like a whole album of their Hawaii trip, you know, which might be a little bit more safe than posting it while you're there or before, you know, giving some d dates um, for that. Okay. Any other tips that the, that the person went over? Yeah, some of them we kind of covered already. Eric covered like passwords last week. Don't use um, the same password. Um, and um, a couple other ones. I want to do one more video because I think um, there's another video that also um, covers this pretty well. And here it is. A house or a laptop? Which one do you think is worth more? Well, definitely not the house because it not only costs millions to buy. Okay, so this is another like five easy ways to protect yourself. And, and um, they might overlap here, but um, you know, the more we talk about it, the more it's reinforced. So just bear with me. Mr. Robot is probably one of the most accurate portrayals of what hackers can actively do. If you're interested in hacking and, and, and don't understand a lot of this, the TV show itself uh, actually employs uh, hackers to work on the show to depict real life hacks that could happen in real life. And it's a very, very accurate portrayal of everything that we see in today, from being able to hack smartphones to getting access to a big corporation and being able to bring them to their knees from a cyber perspective. So what's the top five things that you can do to make yourself more secure, both at your business and your home? Number one, use two-factor authentication or two-step verification everywhere that you can. Uh, your banking systems, Twitter, Facebook, all support the ability for you to enable an additional security feature that you may not know. If you go to your settings, it's in there. You can enable it, and every time that you log in, it'll register your computer, and you can then get a text message to go into that system as a second form of verification. And why that's important is because if a hacker gets access to your, your password, they still have to have access to your phone to get access to your account. And that's really important by enabling that specific security step. Probably number one. Number two, don't use the same password everywhere. I know it's hard, but using the same password everywhere is one of probably the easiest ways that we break in as hackers. So if you have the same Twitter password as the same banking information, those are things that can get you in some serious trouble. Number three, Make sure that you stay up to date, those security patches. Every time you have a Windows update that says, hey, I need to update your computer, it's usually to fix a known attack that hackers have figured out to get access to your computer. So keep up to date, whether you're using a Mac, they aren't impervious to attack, or using Windows, same thing, update your systems. That's the most important thing. Always keep up to date with what you're having out there. Same thing for third-party applications. If you're using Java, Adobe, PDFs, Office documents, those are all things that you wanna keep up to date and that makes it much harder for us as hackers to break into your, your system. Number four, social media. Be careful with how much information you actually put online. We as attackers can look at that. Uh, look at what you do, your spending habits, uh, your, your, what you might be doing from a day-to-day -day perspective, going and buying Starbucks at a certain location. Those are all things that we can use to, to identify when you're going to be out of the country or when you're going to be at a business meeting. We, we can use that as a method to attack you. One of the main things that we do as hackers, especially when it comes to social engineering, is we create a sense of urgency, something that you're familiar with, but you have to take action upon. So let's just say, for example, I, uh, I'm a Verizon customer and I have an Amazon package that's getting delivered. Well, if I, as an attacker, know an Amazon package is getting delivered, sending a text message from a Verizon customer support service line coming from Amazon saying, hey, your package is being rerouted. You need to log into the site to get it delivered again. is something that an attacker can use. So those are the things that attackers can leverage is, is urgency, uh, how, you, how you actually operate, and all that information that you post online are things that we can use as attacks. And last but not least, personal information. That's one of the biggest things that uh, attackers can leverage to get access to your data. Things like social security numbers, your credit card numbers. A person is not going to call you on the phone from a, a banking service and ask you for that type of information. So whenever you get a call that's, that's too good to be true or a call that is, is a fraud services line, call them back. Look at the number on the website themselves and call it back. Because a lot of times attackers will impersonate financial services. They'll impersonate different organizations to try to get your personal information and use that to be able to make fraudulent charges. So when it comes to that, your phone... 
verify first, go to their site, call the site itself uh, from there, and then call to an actual person that's actually at that institute itself. All right. Um, cool, any comments or questions on the, um, on the video we just watched? I know that we covered a lot of it. Um, <clears throat> Two-factor authentication is the best thing for security, but it can also cause a lot of problems. If you have, and, and, that, and Alex, that's, that might be another whole nother class you could do uh, on security, but two-factor authentic, uh, authentication. Say you put it on your phone, right? Mm -hmm. And you have it on there, you use it to log into your email, to some of your other accounts, whatever. Well, then you lose your phone or you get a new phone or you update your iOS and you uninstall the authenticator. Well, guess what? Then you can't access your account and you're gonna to have to sit on the phone for two hours with customer service, having to verify your identification. I just went through that two weeks ago and it took me over a week to fix getting into an account because I forgot to remove two-factor authentication. So while two-factor authentication is the best sec uh, security that we can have for a majority of, of things that we're doing online now, and it's becoming a lot more widely used, there are dangers associated with it. So if you, I would encourage everybody on the call now, if you're not familiar with two-factor authentica authentication, ask, and you want to use it, ask Alex to give you a little rundown, or perhaps do a little research online before installing it so you know all the ins and outs of it before going that path because it can be confusing so i just wanted to say that yeah thank you that's very um helpful eric because um both in those videos you know one one person's an nsa hacker you know that's like who else is better to talk about safety and security than that person right and he's promoting two-factor authentication with which Eric um, agrees is a great form of protection, but we don't see the downside sometimes, right? There's always pros and cons. Um, now, something that Eric mentioned was maybe, you know, if you know you're going to do the um, two-factor authentic authentication, authentication. My word is so see, see, I messed you up too. It, it, it's authentication, but I keep saying authentication. Right, yeah, yeah. Tongue, tongue twister, right? <laughs> yeah. Say that five times that, fast. Say it five times fast. Yeah. Then um, you could probably change it before you get a new device. You know, if you lose your device, then that would be harder. And, you know, I, I know that's a lengthy process like Eric talked about. But, um, yeah, we might have to have a, a separate training on that. It's a good call, Eric. Um, any other comments on those videos? Anybody learn something or um, have experience with anything they mentioned? Yeah. Hi, Mary. Mary here. Yeah, I've, I've got about 6% of my battery at this moment. Right. And I would just, um, I would say, yes, I have 6% on my battery. So I might, I might be out of here quickly. Just wanted to say yes, Wells Fargo Bank. A couple of times I've gotten fraudulent calls onto my emails asking for data. And I had to go, you know, because my skills are so minimal, I had to go down to the bank and they're the ones that told me they could tell in a minute, this is fraudulent, do not respond. And they put me on a watch list as well, special list uh, for their customers. Um, so it's pretty common. I've had probably three uh, events of that sort, at least. Thank uh -huh. you. Thanks for sharing that, Mary. That was that was really cool that you said that you got a call and then you asked your bank about it. That's exactly what one should do, right? Is never to respond to that caller that you're unsure of or that the email or text message. You know, just like the video talked about, you want to verify that that business is legitimate. Maybe go in person to your bank. Maybe go to the actual website of the bank. Oh um, yeah. Also, uh, that's an idea. Yeah give them a call. Um, so like Mary did, um, that's a great safety precaution before handing over any information to someone you're not sure about. Um, one, of the, one of them asked for money to be sent to Ukraine 
<laughs> oh man, hopefully it's not sure. for, uh, the war is going on right now. Well, oh. it's going on, but like, you know, whatever's going on over there. Um, okay, well, um, I'm just going to share my screen one more time and just, um, so all this information that um, Eric, Jesse and I have talked about, you know, um, is on the agenda that, that is posted um, with the recorded video online. Um, so under resources, I put those videos, I put some examples, and here are some safety tips that I wrote down from sort of summary of videos and some research, um, some of the trainings we've done in the past. So, um, you know, one of them that the, the video that was mentioned in the video, be wary of messages with a sense of urgency, right? If they're like, oh my God, your package is getting rerouted. You have to take action now, click this link, right? We tend to get really worried and frantic. And maybe um, when we are in a certain sense of urgency and reaction, we, we don't make the best choices. So uh, pause there, uh, maybe do what Mary did and um, call the, the actual business and confirm everything before doing so. Be wary of grammar errors. Um, so a lot of times websites um, that are not legitimate will have grammatical errors. They might um, spell instead of like uh, Google G-O-O-G-L-E, they might spell G-O-G-G-L-E and pose as like Google or um, some other website. So be wary of grammatical errors. See if they have like an address, um, a phone number you can call and verify. Um, a lot of times I'll, I've told people, and it's, it's kind of on this one, um, you can do your research on the product, the website, or business by doing a Google review or a Yelp review. Um, and by Google, doing a Google review or your Yelp review, you can see how many people have um, rated this business. You can see the comments. Um, so a lot of times they'll have like a phone number and address that you can verify. So just doing your research and making sure that it's legitimate um, goes a long way. And then verifying the sender email address, you know, make sure to check, if, especially if it's a message um, that you're unsure of. I think I gave an example one time. Um, and I actually might have gotten a recent one I'll show you guys. So yeah, just check your spam. I'm sure we all have. Yeah, I have some in spam, but I got this CE investing. You guys see that on my screen? It says CE investing Cameroon limited. Cameroon is a country in Africa, right? And it's telling me about all these like, you know, ways to invest. This this doesn't like look like a legitimate email to me. No. Um, there's a link in the bottom, of course. You know, if I click on that link, I'm almost certain that I'll have like a a um virus. they don't even say your name that's another thing exactly they don't say my name they have a, a couple of emails that i can see that i don't even know so um you know this is a good example of a, that's just so bad and you know i could always put this in my spam folder um or or block it or something like that if i wanted to um another safety precaution but uh Okay, um, right, if it's too good to be true, it is usually yeah. probably not somebody in Cameroon, Africa, that's like, oh, I have this special opportunity just for you, right? Um, you know, during Black Friday, I was very eager to buy a vacuum and I searched Facebook Marketplace. Of course, I found one for like a hundred bucks that's like worth like 800. I clicked on it. Um, um, because like Facebook has these advertisements, right? And then I went to the website, the website looked really not legitimate, didn't have address. You know, it was like, I had a timer that says buy now and all that. Um, so you, it was probably too good to be true. Um, I mean, there's a tiny chance it wasn't, maybe I, I missed out on a great vacuum deal, but I'd rather take my chances than, uh, have somebody hack my, yeah. Uh, statements and all that um you can't clean that up <laughs> we talked about going to the websites right check for the lock secure https on the website we've talked about this before 
um, and the website address at the top here, you guys can see my screen. To the left, if you're on Google Chrome, there's an arrow. And if you click on the arrow, it says, it'll tell you if the connection is secure or not. Uh, this little lock button will tell you that. Uh, I never knew that was there. Wow. Me neither. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Yeah, so this connection is secure. Um, you know, uh, you can explore more about the security measure there. You can see your cookies. Um, another thing to do is if you double click on the address, you can see that HTTPS pops up and that's how I know that's uh, usually a safe website um, is if it has this HTTPS, um, it's been through some sort of security measure. Um, okay. So we talked about contacting the seller, doing your research, never revealing personal information. It was covered in the video, like your social security number, your password, login stuff. Um, you know, that personal information is usually a red flag that um, someone's trying to get at your information. We talked about use two factor authentication up, update. Um, and I probably should have finished this sentence. <laughs> Update your uh, computer and apps. Um, so in the video, and we talked about it before, um, updating your computer and your apps is one of the biggest ways to prevent uh, security breaches. You know, on a Google Mac, um, if I hide all these things um, at the top left, I have the little Apple icon here, I can click on this and um, I can go to system preferences and I already see that there's one update available. Um, when I click on that um, and go to software update, um, it'll check my software updates and um, I can click to update this to uh, you know, secure my computer uh, even better. I'm not going to do that now because it's going to restart. And sure enough, on the App Store, um, my icons at the bottom left here. Um, you know, you have an App Store on your phone, your computer. Even if you have an Android, it'll be like a Google Play um, icon or something like that. And then those there should be an updates um, option here. And one of my apps, WhatsApp uh, needs to be updated. So I'm going to do that in a bit. Um, and again, that's going to help prevent my computer from getting hacked from all these other kind of um, security uh, breaches that could happen. Um, okay, let's go back. Okay, updates. Fingerprint. Um, fingerprints are another, sometimes you see them in two factor authentic authentication. <laughs> I'm going to say it one day. Um, and, um, you know, for some of our clients who might struggle with, uh, entering their passwords, remembering their passwords, um, even just, uh, you know, anybody, um, who has, you know, sometimes I have, um, memory issues and there's a ton of passwords fingerprint um, for your phone or something like that might be uh, the way to go. You know, um, a lot of people use it um, according to this study I was looking up. Um, oh, actually, I guess I already had to update your apps and software. Um, and then download software from reputable websites. Um, and we talked about being careful what you post, personal information again. Um, so these are just some tips here. I know it seems like a long list, but um, we covered a lot of them in other trainings and some of them are um, pretty intuitive. Is there any questions on any of the safety tips for social media or um, any of the videos we've watched? No, I think I got it. I, I was really happy to learn about the uh, secure connection in Google. That's you learn something new every day, I guess. That's yeah, I didn't know that either. Oh, cool. Cool beans. Um, 
Okay. Um, Eric, did you want to yeah. over? You know, we have like eight minutes here. Um, Absolutely. Let me go ahead and do you mind if I share the screen real quick? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Now, hold on. Let me get over here. Okay. Now, I am going to bust through this real quick. Mary, I know you have a specific question about followers and following. So I'm going to go through this, and then I have a whole section specifically for you. Now, how are you doing on your battery there, Mary? Well, it's probably about 4%, so I may fade out. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and skip here to uh, Instagram tips, followers, and following. Now, um, this hopefully should answer the question that you have. And if it doesn't, I'm happy to help you uh, help you further offline uh, when you get some battery here, too. All right. So uh, what is the difference between following and followers on Instagram? Followers are those who follow your account. They can see what you post on your Instagrams, such as content, videos, images, and stories. All right. They're allowed to like and share your content on their accounts. So it's basically like them going to your account, looking at all your pictures, and then they can be like, oh, I like that picture. Boom, click it, and then they share your picture with all their friends as well. So that's how things kind of go viral, as they say, right? Your followers are your audience, Mary. Uh, they get a notification whenever you post anything on your Instagram profile or account. So if I follow you and you post that you're going to Hawaii, I'm going to see that. They can be your friends, loved ones, and colleagues. In general, they are people following you and keeping track of what you post on the social network that is Instagram. Now, following refers to the list of users that you personally follow on Instagram. These users posts appear on your feed and you have access to, to view uh, their profile if you want. So if you're following Alex, for instance, you can click on Alex's name in your feed, go to his profile and see what he has posted there. All right. Uh, they are people whom you follow on Instagram for viewing their updates and all sorts of information they share on Instagram. You may be following celebrities, athletes, influencers, bloggers, friends, family, or random people you, you like to follow. Like I said, Alex, myself, Jesse, uh, integrated community services, any of those people. Uh, most people tend to follow famous artists, actors, sports people, musicians, things like that. Um, now, how do you know if somebody is following you on Instagram uh, from their profile? And so you can go to anybody's profile and you can tap on the following option found at the top of the screen. Here you'll see a list of every user they're following. Tap the search bar and then type in your own name on Instagram handle. If your name comes up, it means they're following you. And if your account is set to private, only people who follow you can see your posts and your feed. Meaning, if I don't follow you, Mary, and I go to your account, I can't see anything. But if I do follow you, I can go there and I can see everything that you post. Um, all right. So, Mary, do you have visual? Because I can log in and uh, show you visually if you like. You know, Eric, um, the irony is that I'm so I'm so primitive on these skills that I never post okay. anything except likes or dislikes. So I'm not in any imminent danger or risk because I don't really have anything going there at this point. Okay. Um, but it just makes me more comfortable to know what these terms mean. And I appreciate your... Absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot, Eric. Uh, uh, of Eric, course, it, of course. It, it might be, a visual might be helpful if you don't mind logging into like... Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely here. Of course. Thank you. Uh, give me a moment to bring up Instagram here. All right. So now I have my account secured so i am logged in here always so let me go ahead and move this over here okay just one moment oops oh i'm so sorry folks i moved the wrong screen uh there we go okay so you see here this is my uh, main instagram page all right i'm gonna go here i'm just gonna click on a post here all right we're gonna see we've got 19 likes here 
All right. Well, let's see. Is Jesse like this one? Oh, look. There's there's Jesse right there. We're going to click on her. Now, I go to her site, and I can see some stuff that's uh, going on here. Right. So it looks like, Jesse, you're set to public, aren't you? Yep. All right. I can go follow here. And now I can see everything. But let me go ahead and go to a site where I might not be following somebody. So let's go here. No, I can see all there. So hold on here. I'm trying to find a private account. My sister's private. If you go to hers. Okay. What's her name? Well, just to go on my most recent photo. All right. Oh, there you go. Right there. Okay. So I can probably click on her. All right. Great. So see... This account here is set to private. I cannot see anything they post. No pictures, no stories, no feeds, no nothing. Now, I can hit follow button, and if she accepts it, I'll be following her, and then I can see her feed. Or she cannot accept it, and I won't see it. So right there, this account is set to private. Now, um, I don't want to follow her. Because uh, question uh, for, question for you: creepy, If but, you follow her, yeah. If you hit that follow button and she accepts, then you follow her, right? Does mm -hmm. that mean that she's also yes. following you, or so you? Just... No, no. She she would have to manually click on following me. So she would have to go to my account, uh, my profile, and then click on follow, and then she could follow me right there. Gotcha. Yeah. So that that's uh, it. It, do, it doesn't ever auto. Um, right. It does, I think in the early days it actually did do that, um, and then you'd end up with like a thousand followers, right? Following and follow followers. In fact, so, I Instagram before it was popular, like only like like less than I think it was less than two hundred people that had an Instagram account. My goodness! Wow, that's that's actually pretty like it impressive. wasn't like it was not under the, like on the home page of. Um, of um, the app store or anything. I just randomly found it one day. And the next thing I knew, it just turned into this huge big thing. And then I looked it up and it was sure enough. And the time frame was only like less than 200 people had an Instagram at the time. Oh, that, I like that. That is, that is really, really cool. <laughs> okay. So let's see. So I am following all of these people here. So if I go back to Jesse's account again, because I'm following her. Well, her account is also not set to private, but because I'm following her, I can now see all of her posts. I can see what she's doing. I can like a post here. I can make a comment here, or I can share the post with other people as well. It's all pretty simple, actually. Uh, let's see here now. Oh, Mary, did you have any other questions you'd like me to? Oh, oh, you know what? It looks like Mary dropped off, didn't she? Oh, her phone. Yeah, her, her phone probably died. Ah, her, her phone. Her phone is. So, yeah. Alex, do you want me to, for for the video, go through briefly these, or would we like to do that another time? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead? Yeah, we got like five minutes. You can you can go ahead and go through that, um, Eric. Okay. I'm still here. Yeah, I'm just like me? my water bottle real quick. Oh, no problem, Jesse. Uh, Alex, would you like me to do it um, uh, visually, or just go through the bullet points here? For folks. Whatever you whatever you think is best, Eric, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. All right, no problem. All right. So for those watching at home, here are some announcements for February for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here are a few tips to update and optimize your profile for Instagram. I'm gonna go ahead and do this right here. And then if we have enough time, I'll bring it up uh, visually, but this should be able to help you. If you bring up your Instagram account at home, either on your phone or your PC or Mac, you can read along here and reproduce the steps to achieve what you want to. All right, so now that you've created an Instagram account, we got some users tips. Update and optimize your profile. To update your profile information, including your name, username, and email address associated with your account, navigate to your profile at the top right of your screen and tap edit profile. So uh, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and just bring that up here. Go here, bring up my Instagram account, <coughs> tap this, and I'm gonna hit the profile button. 
All right, so you see the profile button right there. If I click on Edit Profile, I can edit my name here, make it whatever I want within uh, acceptable. Oh, no, that would be your username. So your name here, put whatever name you want. I have EO just for a little bit of privacy. My username, VO Kitty, ICS. Uh, you can put that whatever you want within reason. They'll tell you if it's available or not. All right. You can add your own website and a little bio. Now, you have 150 characters here to where you can write, Hello, my name is Eric, and I love ICS. Or whatever you choose to write there, a little bit about yourself. Uh, many people cho choose to say some of their interests, uh, how they identify um, their you know, dating status, whatever you want to put in their personal information. And then you have your private information here, your email address. You can update that, change it to whatever you like, your phone number and your gender. OK, and then you hit submit and that and that's how you update your profile there. Let's bring that back up. All right. Profile photo. Again, very simple. Instagram profile photos are displayed in 110 by, by 100 pixels, but the image files are stored at 320 by 320 pixels. So make sure to upload an image that's at least that big. Even though the dimensions are in square format, Instagram profile photos are circular. Now, if you don't understand anything about pixels, sizing pixels, or how to size photographs, again, that is a potential for another training session. Or if you have questions about that, you can ask Alex. Um, he's more than willing, I'm sure, to uh, help you understand that. Maybe consider another training for that. All right, so I'm going to quickly run through how to change your photo here. Again, click here. Change profile photo. You can upload a new photo. All right, search on your computer, wherever you want, wherever you have photos. You can go wherever you keep them. I'm just going to go here to my images. I'm going to select an image here. And it automatically converted my profile image to the right size. All right. So if you have an image that is way too big, it will automatically cut out a piece of that image to put in your photo here. And it won't always be what you want. So that's why you want to have as we discussed, an image that meets these guidelines. All right, moving on to the next profile picture. Um, again, we just went through changing profile picture on PC. To do it on a mobile device, tap profile on your profile picture in the bottom right to go to your profile. Tap edit profile, tap change profile photo, then select where you'd like to import the picture from. Tap done on iPhone, done on Android after making your changes. You can take a new photo directly with your phone or add a photo from your phone's library or Facebook. If you choose to import from Facebook, Instagram will use the same picture you're already using for your Facebook profile. It's easy like that because they're both owned by the same company, Meta. They're kind of tied in together like that. And again, we already went over how to do it on, on the PC visually there. All right. And lastly, I'm going to go over very quickly tips on posting to Instagram if we're still good on time, Alex. Yeah, I think we've got a couple minutes. All right. Okay, great. So I'm going to run through visually how to make a post on a PC or Mac. First off, you want to tap the icon at the top of your screen. All right. So let's go ahead and just do that as we're going along here. Okay. So. Tap the icon at the top of your screen. Let's go back to our main page here. Oh, look who's that guy right there. Still got a great beard. <laughs> that All video right. within a video. So you want to, uh -huh, you want to hit the plus icon at the top of your screen to create a new post. You can drag photos and videos here. Now you can drag them directly from your desktop or folder, or you can click select from your computer to open it up. And it's going to ask you what pictures do you want to post? So I'm just going to, again, why don't I just take any random photo here? All right, we're going to do this. It's going to put the photo in a big window here. Now you have many options. You can post multiple photos by pressing this button here. Boom. Click on the plus. You can add a second photo. All right. When you're done getting your photos, you click next. 
and it's going to ask you if you want to do any kind of filtering. I can put on a Clarion filter, a Gingham filter. I can change the colors here. I can make it darker, lighter, however I want. I can do adjustments to brightness, contrast, saturation, temperature, fade, make it a vignette, all kinds of neat little tricks here. I hit next. It's going to ask me, okay, do I want to add any accessibility text? All right. If I want to write that, I could go, um, Describe photos. So I would say um, photo of a cat with crazy eyes. All right. Now this description, accessibility text, is for those who are visually impaired. It allows them to click on a button and it will read to them out loud or explain what the picture is so they get an idea of what they may be looking at here. All right. You can add a location to your post if you want. I can say uh, Tustin, California, where I live. It'll bring up a list of locations. I click on that. There's also advanced settings. I can turn off commenting. That means that if I turn it off, Alex, Jesse, anybody that comes to my profile that wants to say nice photo, they can't do that. Now, that prevents people from commenting. That can be a positive or negative thing. So decide if you want comments or not. All right. So I'm going to turn off commenting and then I'm going to click share. Your post has been shared. So now if I go back to my profile, oops, I go hit the home button and it will show. Well, I don't know why it's not showing up right now profile huh maybe you well, do. you might have to refresh your page I might have to yeah I might have to refresh the page but uh, what is going on here well there yeah. we go aha so post showed up I click on it just in California I could be the first to like my own post because I've got no comments there you're not gonna see anything right so that's how you make a post on PC now, it is infinitely easier on a, uh, on a mobile device, cell phone. You see all the steps it takes for a PC right there. But for a mobile device, you simply log into your Instagram account, tap the plus icon at the top of your screen. To upload a photo from your phone's library, you simply select the photos you want to share by tapping on them. You can do multiple photos at once. You can also take a new photo. Um, you can tap switch between the front and rear facing cameras. You can adjust the flash. You can do all kinds of things on your phone that you can't do with your PC. When you're done, tap share. Just like on PC, your post will be there. So very simple. Now, there are all kinds of tips and tricks to be pros on how to edit pictures, on how to uh, get more followers on Instagram. Do a simple search. I recommend doing YouTube. While we don't have time to go into YouTube searching right now, go on to YouTube, type up power users for Instagram, and that will bring you up wonderful video guides. You're also welcome to reach out to myself, Alex, and I'm sure Jesse knows how to use Instagram pretty good too. We're all happy to assist there. So that's, uh, that's where I will leave it today with Instagram. Awesome. Thanks so much, Eric. Really appreciate it the instagram tips and uh, that was pretty comprehensive i think um awesome um well it's just three of us so i'm not going to ask if we have any questions but uh, well, uh i think well alex i i will share i, I will also share the uh, the presentation documents if you like we can yeah if you want to folks if folks want that stuff yeah, if you want to put that under your section of the agenda, like, you know, under like resources or something like that, um, you know, you can share that. Um, I think there's absolutely is it under Google, is, is it Google Slides or something? Yeah, uh, you know, it is it's either PowerPoint or Google Slides, but it converts it, it should convert just fine. Now, okay. our yeah. agenda is uh, our joint shared uh drive from last week right or our shared uh... yeah it's a it's that um yeah it should be there and then uh 
there should Good. be yeah. you should be able to like like put a link for your um, video if you publish it. Uh, I see publicly and stuff. Awesome. Well, awesome. Uh, that that was kind of it, um, guys. I really appreciate you guys once again. Um, you know, sharing the space with me. Um, just like thank you for the invite. Yeah, totally. I mean, there might be like down yeah. the road more stuff. I feel like we kind of scratched the surface here and I'm just thinking of other th things like we could just have. I mean, you know, Alex, th this j just our little even our little training today, parts that you were speaking of, things that J 